What I have here is a Thompson Center Encore, 460 Smith & Wesson, 24 inch stainless steel fluted barrel, made by MGM. Definitely a beautiful gun and popular here in Michigan, in Indiana, in the shotgun zones, where we can't shoot the uh, high powered rifles, the 270s, 30-06, and 308s, but uh, recently we passed a law that you can shoot a pistol round that cannot exceed a 1.8 inch casing. So uh, I've been using my muzzle loader for the past five years and happy with it, but I uh, thought I'd try something different. And I ended up with the uh, 460. Shout out to the uh, Thompson Center Encore group on Facebook. Just type Thompson Center Encore and a uh, great group of people. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I asked that group and uh, it was between a lot of people like the 357 Maxim too. A um, couple pros and cons, just like the 460. The uh, I, I thought a con for me was the 357 Max is you have to you have to load your own uh, your own ammo and I don't load so I knew that was out of the question but a lot of people like that it shoots a little bit flatter it's a smaller bullet and it it doesn't have as uh, stout as a recoil as the 460 does and trust me this thing this thing kicks I had to compare it I compare it to a a 12 gauge slug, just a just a little sharper kick. The initial once you pull the trigger, just a sharper, sharper hit. Um, I actually sighted this in once with the Burris Z rings. This is a, a Nikon Pro Staff, and uh, this has the Weevil, Weaver Quad rings right now. But I had the Burris Z rings on a couple weeks ago and uh, sighted it in, shot it. It was moving on me every time I shot it. I didn't realize that at first, and I, they were bouncing all over the place. But once that scope finally stopped where the rings were, where the housing and the, or whatever you want to call it, stopped the uh, scope from moving, I sighted in 150 yards, got a quarter-inch groupings, and it shot great. And then I brought it out to 200 yards, and the nice thing with that Nikon Pro Staff is uh, it shot that second bubble, 200 yards on that BDC reticle shot perfect at 200 yards. I was I was impressed and very happy after shooting about half a box where it was bouncing all over the place. Um, I was using the Hornady FTX. I actually don't have the box with me because I just got done shooting it. But uh, I shot the Hornady FTX and that second round that I shot snapped my foreign. It was my fault because I was using a lead sled and that's the main problem. I realize that now. So I ended up getting different rings and uh, thought I'd try something a little different to see if it would hold the scope a little bit better, and it didn't. I had it professionally put on, bore sighted and everything, and I just got done shooting it, and uh, it, it moved all over the place. Definitely frustrated. I know the thing is capable of shooting very well, it just it didn't, it didn't do what I wanted it to do, and uh, I need to find a way to keep that scope from not moving on me because that's my problem and I might have even ruined the scope because the way it's located right now after shooting it but I'll get it dialed in one of these one of these times um, this right here is a, a silicone it's a cartridge casing I think you can get it on Amazon it's a cartridge carrier if you look that up on Amazon they're like $9.99 pretty nice put on your forearm like that if it's, it's convenient but uh also, I don't know if I re brought this up, but it shoots 454 Casal and a 45 Long Colt. So you can it's three guns for the price of one. They're not cheap barrels, but uh, they're fun to shoot if you can deal with the stout recoil and make sure you get the nice scope. Because I've heard a lot of stories of it cracking scopes. Also, <laughs> I felt the wrath with this uh, foreign. Anyways, what I plan on doing is uh, shooting it through a corneograph and actually showing the uh, speeds of uh, the Hornady. FTX and the uh, Underwood XTP. See how fast it shoots through the corneograph. So uh, stay tuned and uh, see how it shoots. All right, today I'll be shooting the Thompson Center Encore 460 Smith and Wesson in a rifle barrel, 24 inch. And I'll be shooting the Hornady 200 grain FTX. That's what that bad boy looks like. I actually shot it through the corneograph three times so far. First one was 29.69, the second one was 29.18, and the third one was 29.06. So I figured I'd put it on video to show you guys 
the fourth one. Let's try it out. Make sure I don't shoot the corneal graft. Two thousand eight hundred ninety-two. So it's going from it's going within a hundred feet per second. It's pretty consistent, which is what I like to see with this underwood or this uh, hornady. Whoops. I don't know if you guys can see that. Hopefully you can. Two thousand eight hundred ninety-two. All right, next I will be shooting the Underwood 240 grain XTP. This will be shooting a little slower. I shot this one twice. The first one was 2,616. And the second one was 2,702. That's what it looks like. Let's give this one a shot. Literally. Fire in the hole. Two thousand six hundred ninety-nine. So I'd say the uh, underwood is pretty consistent too. So for those of you who uh, were curious to see how the uh, four sixty Smith and Wesson shoots with the. Uh, 24 inch rifle barrel now you guys know at least with the horny and the underwood hope this was informative sure was for me